Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Alumni Talks webinar that will give you first-hand information from Vienna University Executive Academy MBA experience. My name is Mila, and I am the moderator of this webinar on behalf of UNIMAI. Please welcome our panelists, viewers alumna Katarina Stanislavlevich, Managing Director of Karak Austria, member of Denso Aegis Network, and Anna Patterson, Marketing Manager at the University of Vienna. They will be telling us about the educational journey and how acquiring a degree from Vienna University can enhance your career. You will be able to send your questions throughout the entire webinar by typing them in the chat box and our panelists will take the time to give an answer during the Q&A in the second half of this uh, event. So, okay, let's check the sound now. Could you please write in the chat box, box if you can hear me? Okay, great, thank you. So we can start now with the presentation. Wonderful. Well, hello everybody, and I hope you're feeling well considering the circumstances and that you're safe. My name is Anna Patterson. A big welcome from my side here at the VU Ex Executive Academy. Katarina, would you like to say also a few words? Uh, yes, uh, it's really my pleasure to be here today. Um, I, yes, as said before, I'm a managing director of Karat in Austria, but also I'm a proud alumna of the VU Executive Academy. Between 2015 and 2017, I was participating in a professional MBA program, Marketing and Sales, and it was really, uh, you know, amazing experience, which I'm looking forward to share with you today. Wonderful. So I'd say let's start to get started. Um, today we are having a short presentation for you folks, and the agenda is basically this presentation to take maybe 20, 30 minutes, and afterwards, as Mila mentioned, we're very happy to have a Q&A session. So make use of the chat box we have today with you. And so our program is basically designed to give you an overview of the MBA programs, but then actually to dig into the insights that Katarina can provide, considering the workload, also time management tips, and further insights she has in as an alumni. And to give you a little bit of an overview, these are our MBA programs. Now, you might be wondering, okay, the Vienna University of Economics and Business, how does that relate to the VU Executive Academy? Well, what we call the VU Executive Academy is the business school of this university. We cater to postgraduate education, and our students are on average a lot older than the students doing their bachelor and master or other consecutive degree programs. So our average students are 35 years old, and Katarina will get into that a little bit more later. And what we offer in terms of MBA programs are these three types of programs here in English. We have a, an executive MBA structure, the first two programs on the left, and then we have a professional MBA. And the Global Executive MBA and the Executive MBA Bucharest are basically catered towards people who are looking for a global degree at let's say the meta level of management, they don't specialize in a certain area because they're looking towards getting the language of different areas and being able to speak the language. Whereas a professional degree and professional MBA student, excuse me, is very keen on specializing in a certain area, for instance, marketing and sales. And it's not that they won't ever become a CEO but they're very keen on specializing in their career at this stage in their life right now in a certain industry or a function. So that's why we offer the professional MBA with eight specialization op options. Our programs are also all part-time, no matter what type of MBA you do here. And most of them are based in Vienna. One in Bucharest is of course based in Bucharest. But however, all these programs do have an international touch. When uh, travel restrictions are no longer applying, we're going to be also taking students on international residencies. And this is where you really learn about globalization and doing business on the ground in different cultures, with different management styles, and so on. We like to teach with the best. The Vienna University of Economics and Business is triple accredited. 
And these accreditations also have to be renewed every five years. And in doing so, one criteria is also the quality of education. And how this plays out has a lot to do of who we invite to the classroom to teach. So we have a lot of teachers coming in from Vienna University of Economics and Business itself. However, we also invite guest lecturers from our partner universities. VU Vienna has 200 partner universities worldwide, so we can pick really from the cream of the crop. And we have invited people from IE Business School, the University of South Carolina, Indian School of Business, the ESCP in Europe, in France, and we have different lecturers coming in to teach. And we also have different practitioners coming in to teach as well, to give the management hands-on aspect, really this tangible feel and touch in the classroom. And Katarina, I hope you will um, be adding to this, of course, in a little bit. Now, as far as your peers who is involved with the MBA, we have two types of, let's say, the average student. In the Global Executive MBA, they're a little bit older. They're around 38 years old. The professional MBA students are 34 years old. However, both have a lot of career experience in terms of that. It's definitely more senior than MBA programs typically are in North America. We recently hosted a webinar in January with part, um, partnering with Prep Advisor. So if you'd like to hear more about the differences between an MBA in North America versus an MBA in Europe, you can get with, in touch with me after this and I'd be glad to share the recording with that with you. But as far as the peers in the classroom um, goes, you're going to be mixing with a lot of people. This is probably the uh, really important essence of the MBA, increasing your network. And you'll be mixing often with people from more than 20 to 25 nations, depending on the program you choose. So it's a very unique situation to uh, be in, considering it's so short and it's kind of comparable to if you were to switch jobs every year for 10 years, that's how many different people you could get in contact in, in terms of the diversity you would see in the MBA classroom. And I don't know, Katarina, um, if you want to add on this, but I'd like to say one more thing considering our rankings. We have um, been involved in the Financial Times rankings for several years now. A business school has to also be able to prove certain criteria in order to be allowed to enter the rankings. And we're very proud to say that we are in the top 50 when it comes to executive MBA. And also we are ranked very high among um, working experience of the students and as well um, as with the international diversity in the classroom, we're under the top 12 worldwide. And these are a few rankings. You can also see in Romania, we were also ranked as the second best MBA program for uh, several years ago. Unfortunately, they stopped doing the rankings. So that's why it looks a bit like hmm, a little old. For as terms as the QS, Global Executive MBA ranking, we are listed number 12 worldwide. So I hope this gives you just like an overview of the VU Executive Academy program. And as far as what else happens on campus when you become a student on the first day of your studies you're invited to what's called the VU executive club this is also called the alumni club of VU and it's uh, one of two that you will actually join and you get career services content and community so it's kind of a nice package that we give you once you are able to sign up for the MBA, you start your first day, you get these services included in the MBA for life. So that's one of the big benefits. And I, I want to ask later Katarina for her opinion on all these uh, services and what she's made use of them. Yeah, so taking a look at the professional MBA, this is uh, where Katarina is coming from. She was one of the students doing the so-called specialization. The advantages of this program is that you learn on the one hand general management and on the other hand, the second half of your MBA is really focusing on an industry field or a job function. You can choose also from nine specialization options 
and study with over 70% international students. And the business core is the first part of the program. Here you're sharpening your management skills for the first nine months. You're also taking courses and evaluating your leadership competencies. So you really kind of get handed through this development phase, which we take very seriously. It's um, going to be accompanying you through the entire business core. At the beginning, you do a sort of leadership evaluation and course. And at the end of the business core, you also do a second course on leadership. And you're comparing really how, how you've changed um, in terms of these first nine months of your MBA journey. And then you move into your specialization. And here we break apart the students at this stage then into their specializations. And here you can really get the advantage of, like I said, beefing up your skills, be it in the area of energy or finance, or maybe an entrepreneurship and innovation specialization interests you or project management. There are lots to choose from. And you top this all off with a master thesis that basically shows your work and what you can show off. Here are the specializations we offer. Uh, one I didn't mention so far was the one in digital transformation and data science. We also have a specialization in European business law. And we have two specializations in German, one in healthcare management and one in public auditing, just in case you are speaking German and interested in doing an MBA in this language. Get in touch. Yeah, so that was a little bit about an overview of the MBA programs here in a nutshell. And I'd like to actually dig deep now into the workload of an MBA and would like to uh, hand it off to Katharina, who's joining us today from her home. Katharina. Uh, thank you, Anna. Uh, so we can just skip to the next slide, basically. I mean, it's a very valid question, you know, how much time do I need to invest in, in you know, uh, doing this MBA program. So statistics of the university show it's uh, somewhere between 15 and 20 hours per week. And you know, how would the workload be structured? It's quite flexible, I have to say, you know, so you would have a pre-module preparation, which would mean that you would get a list of articles, cases, which you would read, and then be asked to either uh, answer the questions, analyze the case, or reflect on the situation in your professional environment. Uh, then we have the modules, uh, which are uh, in uh, class, uh, organized in the blocks, uh, where you have the lectures and, and work with your peers and your, your faculty on the cases. And uh, of course, you know, this is all followed by post-module work. Post-module uh, assignments are usually related to the specific case, uh, you know, on the topic or again, uh, to situation in your company. Uh, very useful and you know I want to have uh, one comment on this uh, work estimated workload it's actually pretty much up to you how much would you, are you willing to invest um, I have friends who have still passed and you know uh, have managed to do it with 10 hours per week me personally in some cases I spent even 40 and uh, it was my utmost pleasure because maybe it was a topic where I was really much involved in and you know you get so much more you get a lot of additional readings additional content and you know this is a unique opportunity to get really deep into the topic but you know if the motivation is right then it really doesn't feel like a, a burden but really like a, a very smart investment of time it's so it's pretty much up to you but there is only one one part of the uh, you know of the whole structure of the of the workload uh, which is not up to you and these are the models and maybe Anna you can jump on the next slide so basically um, you know there are two ways uh, you can you can choose basically uh, from you have four days track where you know the modules or the subjects are clustered in a four day blocks or you can choose eight day track uh, attendance is absolutely mandatory uh, you have to, uh, you know, manage your, your business schedules along that. And, you know, I have been asked before, you know, by potential students, you know, is it possible to skip and to compensate? Uh, again, you know, I have to thank for the, in the name of, of, you know, all my peers and students, uh, you know, Bio Executive Academy has a certain flexibility, but this is in the cases like one of my friends who, who was uh, basically a finalist of the, Financial Times Best Book Idea Award. So if you're getting a, a world renowned award, you know, Executive Academy will have some flexibility, but really please take it seriously. And, and this is uh, a schedule which is uh, carved in stone. 
So this is also kind of a, a good intro in some other topics. How can you actually manage the workload and, and basically what does it mean and what are the tips and tricks on that? Uh, so if we go to, to, uh, to the next point, uh, so basically, first of all, that, you know, one thing will help you immensely. You need to know why are you doing MBA? You know, what's your motivation? What is your goal behind it? If you want to do it because you want to develop, you want to grow, uh, if you want to advance in your career, meet really outstanding people, these are all very valid reasons. Uh, in case, uh, you know, you want to just have three letters, uh, you know, behind your name or, you know, you want to do it because your girlfriend already did it, uh, probably this level of motivation will not push you and will not give you focus to make it top priority in your life during those two years. So if the motivation is right, you know, you will make it happen. Uh, the second thing is the environment. This is a very important topic. So you really have to make sure that you have the right level of support both in your professional and your private environment. What does it mean? You need to have an open conversation, you know, with your employer prior to entering the program and, you know, making sure you have their support. What does it mean? You know, it can be a financial support. They can, you know, support you with some uh, tuition, scholarship uh, in terms of your holidays. I, I really strongly advise it. I didn't take this opportunity. I was not aware. You know, it kind of adds up if you're using your holidays for the module. So even if you have five additional days, it's really coming in handy. Uh, or even if the employer is just fine with you, you know, focusing and, and, you know, having flexibility around your other working schedules. This is an absolute must. I mean, you know, there are, uh, of course, the questions uh, the employers can get a little bit uh, skeptical about, you know, somebody doing an MBA. It's a sign that person is ambitious, is ready for the next step. Usually, you know, it can come out, come with a tag on, you want to change the job. But honestly, what they're getting into, uh, they're getting people who are inspired, coming with new ideas, pushing things forward. So it's absolutely worth having a person with MBA, uh, you know, in the company. Uh, and, you know, if after all the conversation uh, and, you know, all the arguments, uh, the environment is not supportive, you should really seriously reconsider wh whether you are in the right environment, you know, which doesn't support people, you know, uh, moving forward and growing. And it also goes in your uh, private life because, of course, all the holidays, weekends, you know, you, you will have the time that you have to invest in that as well. So you need to have the support in your environment. Plan for it, obviously. I mean, you know, um, there are some... Um, you know, stages in life or some events where, you know, you probably should not consider doing an MBA. So if you're changing the country, you know, uh, come, starting a new job, uh, taking a lot of more responsibility, starting a family, ideally, this would not be an ideal time to, to start an MBA. But I have to tell you, I mean, we all did it. So I moved to a new country. I started a new job. I mean, within my company, uh, my friend Petra, she gave birth to a baby. Uh, the friend Igor, he started a new job, started writing a book. So, you know, we all were in this crazy situations where a lot of things were changing in our, you know, private professional lives and on top starting an MBA. But with this focus, with this motivation and, and you know, which was really intrinsic, it was not we did it for ourselves, not for somebody else. And with support in our professional and private environment, we've managed to do that. And the final point, just really enjoy it. It's unique opportunity to invest uh, some time in yourself in your personal development take it as a gift to yourself so it's not an obligation uh, enjoy learning enjoy growing and really enjoy spending time with amazing people so as Anna mentioned I mean the network at the very executive academy is like nothing else that I know uh, in my class we were 24 nations um, architects artists uh, of course finance people marketeers and, you know, just really amazing people. We, we learned so much from each other. We also had a lot of fun. Um, you know, uh, I was invited to a wedding in Italy. I'm now invited to a wedding in St. Petersburg. So, you know, just take this time and really enjoy it. And also with this, all these amazing people which are, you know, uh, on this journey with you. Yes. Um, and Katarina, can I ask you to remind us again uh, when you graduated from the MBA? Yes. So I have graduated two years ago, basically 2017. Okay, and you're still in touch with everyone. Yeah. Yes, we're very much still in touch. So, uh, yes, I mean, we, we have the WhatsApp group, uh, which is called Just for Laughs, and we're just, I mean, daily, on the daily level in contact. All the big events, you know, we, we go through these events together, good and bad. And, and as again, you know, um, you, you just really uh, have not only, uh, not only network, but really a community. And 
Do you also network on a career focused level too sometimes? Yeah, I, you know, it comes very natural, you know, it's not uh, done strategically, as you would say, you know, and all these events, alumni events, I mean, we can talk about this later, even though, you know, I have finished, I'm very much strongly connected with the academy. And I, you know, I just uh, attend the, the various uh, talks and speaker events, company visits, etc. And you always meet very interesting people. And, you know, from that, you have the business opportunities, uh, or just friendships. But, you know, it's very natural. Uh, nobody, you know, comes with an agenda in mind. It, it really just happens because, you know, the attitude that the community has is a very unique. So there is a lot of generosity around that. So, you know, if you have a, I mean, just to give you an example, now I'm jumping between the topics, but I was uh, a month ago at a, at a talk of one of the uh, top business coaches that we had. Um, and uh, basically that day I was facing a specific leadership challenge. Um, and it was kind of, you know, one of the topics in, in, in the talk around the uh, collaborative leadership. And um, basically, uh, I was talking to, to people I've met first time in my life, um, you know, who were participating in the event. And one of the girls, uh, she just gave me uh, some tips, sent some links um, and uh, suggested some solutions. So basically, without any uh, interest in, in, in the back, just very generous, very open. And this is something that you, you see on, on all the levels. So in every interaction, of course, you know, there is a, you know, business uh, networking opportunity, but it's very subtle and it's very natural. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd suggest then that we, we move back now to our original agenda, but I love the segue. That was really good to know. Um, yes. What about uh, the center of the program? You said you moved to Vienna and what uh, benefits do you think Vienna offers, especially for students? Yes, yeah, so Vienna, I mean, it, it really will help you a lot to, to manage your, uh, your, your, you know, the whole experience, whether, you know, to move to live here, but it's, it's not a must. You can just come for the modules. First of all, Vienna is very well connected. Uh, uh, internationally and also it's a very nice place just to be so if you're just traveling here for the modules which I think it was around 70% of our class was traveling for the modules uh, you know it's just a, a nice opportunity also to to do some sightseeing you know have dinner with your peers from the program or you know visit some cultural events so you can always combine it and uh, it's again you know uh, I mean just from the perspective of living here uh, of course it's I mean, we all know it's one of the voted one of the most livable cities, but just from the experience and, you know, Academy, I mean, I don't know if you, any of you had a chance to visit uh, the Academy. It's a very unique place also in terms of the spirit, uh, energy and architecture as well. Well, I hope we can welcome some people back to campus, um, perhaps late summer or in the fall then. That would be great. So. Yes, that would be really my, my strong advice. I mean, the way I decided to, to enroll in the Executive Academy, I was basically choosing between uh, various programs um, in, in Europe and um, Executive Academy in regular circumstances also offers an option of class visit, which means that you would participate in, in one day uh, in one of the modules and, and get the really free first-hand experience. You know, how does it feel? You know, what, what is the academic level? You know, what is the interaction between the peers? And I was uh, visiting one of the uh, professional MBA models in leadership with Professor Gunther Stahl. And I mean, after that, I just said, you know, I, I want to have this experience. I want to do this for 50 days. I mean, you know, this is the, the length of the program and this is how I have decided. So I definitely encourage you, you know, if the circumstances allow, please take advantage of this. I mean, it will help you a lot because, you know, it will just this actually in my case, this was really evoking this interesting motivation to say, okay, this is the experience I would like to have. All right, yes, so that wraps it up about basically some reasons to come to Vienna. And uh, Katharina, I'd like to also ask you for some tips and tricks as far as um, how you manage an MBA next to your very busy schedule, how sometimes you were able to put 40 hours of prep time into the MBA. How did you make that yeah. work? Yeah, so first, I, I mean, you know, basically, as said, you know, the motivation, you know, I had a very strong, intrinsic motivation. I enjoyed every single part of it, you know, just uh, reading, interacting with my peers, learning from them. And, and I really took it as a, as a personal growth opportunity. So this was in my mind and in my heart priority, which then made it so much easier to, to put it first. 
The second thing, the environment. I mean, I have to say I was a super lucky one that I had the understanding in my private and professional life. I mean, professionally, basically my boss has, first of all, inspired me to do that. I mean, he's alumni, a long time alumni of Executive Academy and the MBA program. Uh, and also he has enabled me also to, to move to Vienna. You know, I mean, I originally moved just for, for studying and working here on a temporary basis and, and I've stayed basically. But um, yeah, he has supported me 100%, but you know, there were circumstances here and there where, you know, uh, he's, let's say, professional interests have interfered with my, uh, or, you know, um, my schedule at the university. So there was a case where I had a strategy module and, and he asked me if I could, you know, skip half of it because, um, you know, we had a, a huge presentation uh, and, and you know, we had a heated arguments around that. But at the end, you know, uh, he accepted my arguments and my, my you know, determined um, uh, decision to, 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 to not miss even like two hours of it. And it was a good choice. It was a very good module. So uh, yeah, just stick to it, really put put it first in your private life, in your professional life, always. And then, you know, uh, again, you know, plan for it. Try really not to, to, to you know, make it um, together with big events. But if you do, um, still, you will you will make it. I mean, all of us, all my, my peers have done it and just enjoy it, really enjoy it. And if I may give a, one advice or tip, you know, uh, I think, Professional MBA is around 50 days that you would need to uh, invest in your uh, modules. Uh, plan for a little bit more because there is so much more going on. Uh, and that, I mean, this is what I also love about Executive Academy. You guys over, uh, under promise and over deliver. I mean, there is so much that you don't see on a website, in a brochure. So there are like company visits, which are great, you know, of, of you know, you can go uh, to top level Austrian companies, for example, uh, hidden gems of, of economy. Uh, then, you know, there are other uh, other programs or trips that you can uh, that you can uh, join. So plan for for more time and, and try to make the most of this experience. Great. Yes. I mean, we do try to make it a full um, worthwhile package because. I mean, you can call it a package. It's, it is what it is, service that you hopefully um, take with you to make lifelong changes. And we know that most people only do one MBA. Doing a second would be really uncommon. So it's a decision that you um, should take with a careful time and consideration because it's going to be a lot of investment of your later your time and as well as, as the income that you have um, because there are tuition fees and travel costs involved. So we want to make sure the MBA is a worthwhile adventure for you to say. And we do have a few known survivors who are happy to share also their further experiences one-on-one -on -one with you. If you'd like to write with an alumnus or an alumna, you can get in touch with me after this presentation and I can connect you with someone perhaps also even from your own country. So this is a service we like to provide because we know people are researching a lot when they do an MBA, uh, before they do an MBA, because it's just that decision you only make once, usually. Um, but as far as the other tips and tricks, um, we've also learned through our experience working with a lot of students who do these part-time programs that three more tips are also pretty important to put aside distractions, to really um, use the classroom time as, as that time for the interaction and to just take the, the breaks then to pick up your phone and, and check in on your work emails. Um, make it worth your time to be there in the classroom. And yeah, if you can, don't answer your phone. We always recommend this. Um, we also work with, with learning experts um, who come and share um, with the team here internally how we can best prepare our students to, to succeed in the classroom. And a lot of the things we do we do because we can, um, but there is a limit. There are certain things we can't control, um, such as how many distractions are in your life and also how much sleep you get. Um, the learning expert who came was actually really um, strongly opinionated on sleep and sleep hygiene. Uh, I don't know how this was for you, Katarina, during your MBA. Did you, did you change your routine? Did you make sleep more of a priority or was it falling into the background? Well, when it comes to healthy sleep habits, I'm absolutely not the benchmark. Um, I don't know. I, I think I trained myself that I can function with four hours of sleep quite well. 
But I have to say, I mean, you learn during the MBA to absolutely, you know, what kind of time you need. I mean, we, we, we were in the situations as a group, you know, that it happened here and there that basically we ended up with one hour of sleep because we didn't plan our, our time well. And we said, OK, we will never do it again. And we did it again. I mean, it's, it's yes, of course, well-being and, you know, you know what you need to, to perform best. For somebody, it's more sleep. For somebody, it's also like uh, walks, uh, you know. Uh, for me, I mean, I get energy from lear learning new things. So basically it was, you know, I, I was in the zone, but I mean, we all knew what do we need? You know, is it a time with your kid or a family or, you know, just do uh, make sure you also get time for other things that give you energy. And that's, that's super important. Honestly, uh, unfortunately, I'm really not a, not a good benchmark. I shouldn't give any advice to, to, to people. <laughs> No, no, we're we're here for your open inputs. I think that's what a lot of listeners today are are keen on getting. Um, of course, you're one of many alumni, and we can get everyone in touch with another person if they want to hear more different inputs and stories. Um, but I'm glad you're here, Katarina, telling us your your opinions, your unfiltered view. Um, and by the way, everyone, we're not paying her; she's doing this on her own time. So. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like like you guys are, but I mean, I'm just the biggest fan, really. I always get so much more, and I still get a lot. And I mean, I will, you know, wrap it up at the at the end. You know, how does it feel uh, once you graduate? What what are the like, you know, what do you miss? What do you kind of? So I will I will I I will give some notes to the that. But I'm really always um, why why do I like to talk to the others? Because I would like to share my experience and give this opportunity to others to have this great experience that me and my my peers have have had. Yes, sure. And in um, in terms of other insights, we have also um, other factors of the MBA program that can also help you complete an MBA degree more easily. Um, these are some topics we picked out. Um, I'm in marketing, so I, I do market research and we ask our students, okay, what really made it um, easier? And this part-time work schedule seems to work a lot better um, in terms of how you can basically manage work-life balance. And we heard a little bit from Katarina that you have to make it a priority as well when there's an important meeting coming up. Um, but generally, our schedules are set in stone 18 months to 12 months at the latest before a program begins so that our potential students can really plan their business trips and their private vacations around the modules. And the professional MBA program does have a small summer break and winter break, so you do get some breathe time there. The Global Executive MBA um, and the Executive MBA Bucharest are ongoing programs though, and they complete um, they complete their degree basically by doing their modules continuously once a month. Whereas the professional MBA is about every four to six weeks, depending on your specialization. Uh, another advantage that part-time programs offer as compared to a full-time program is what we've heard is that people are really, really keen on using the knowledge they've learned and the management skills and the leadership techniques um, the next Monday returning to class. And uh, Katarina was there, I mean, another tidbit on how you might have used um, some module inputs back at work? Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, I think it's it's very good. I mean, also when you choose which program would you like to have, I mean, there are two opinions. You know, the first one is you uh, should go to the new field. Like, so if you were whole life in, I don't know, finance, choose project management or I don't know, marketing. If you were in marketing, try something else. So I was really thinking I was in dilemma until basically the last day between marketing and sales and entrepreneurship and innovation, um, you know, being in marketing, uh, you know, field for like double digit uh, amount of years. And, you know, I'm super happy that I've decided to actually stick to the marketing and sales because even though, you know, with so much experience, there were still some areas where, you know, I got new insights. So for instance, pricing module was amazing. You know, we've learned about all the innovation in pricing, value-based pricing. So, of course, I, I was super happy to use it in my professional life and also to understand, you know, when it was, you know, implemented by our partners. Uh, also, for instance, we had a newer marketing lab. Um, I mean, at this point, I was thinking, okay, that's super interesting, but, you know, 
good to know. And, and then uh, like during that year, we implemented a new marketing uh, solution, which was, you know, scaled from Japan to Austria. And I have managed to really understand it and, and to create a whole value proposition around it. So even though you, you might think, you know, okay, this is just super cool and interesting to know about, but I will not use it in my professional life. And, you know, you might be surprised and, and, and really uh, it's, it's uh, you know, honestly, I'm still using a lot of it. And uh, in a group, you know, of my peers uh, from day to day, you know, you get a question, oh, do you remember this framework? You know, which model was it? Do you have it? Can you share it? So even now, two years after graduation, we're a lot, you know, using it a lot still, and and this is really, uh, really fantastic. Awesome. And the MBA also impacted your career. I mean, you've been since promoted to managing director, which is uh, pretty cool. Do you think the MBA was a factor involved in that decision? No, absolutely. You know, uh, I think you know, and I will, I will go to. I mean, I will talk a little bit more in detail. It's, you know, the knowledge you get, uh, you know, the, the diversity of the topics you can tackle. Also, you work on your weaknesses. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of a lot of it is also about the confidence and empowerment that you get with with this kind of program and, and just talking with different uh, super smart people. And with all this package, of course, you're very much ready to take a new challenge. And that's recognized, I mean, within your professional environment. And. I have to say, I mean, this is a very uh, interesting question, exactly, because I think, you know, there was a, for sure a, a little piece of it that, you know, where Executive Academy and my, you know, me still being very close in touch with it has contributed in this particular situation that my promotion gets uh, accelerated and, and uh, everything goes smoothly. So uh, basically, I even as alumna, you can join some of the trips, uh, study trips, and uh, in September, uh, I was super lucky to join uh, the study trip in San Francisco with a marketing, current marketing and sales class. And basically, we had an amazing module at Stanford, which focused on best practices of startups and also established companies in terms of strategy and leadership in this time of uncertainty. And we also visited some companies like WeWork, Google, NetApp, and it really was a great experience. And uh, I, I returned from the trip, and in the next day, uh, my boss, our CEO, said, you know, okay, the next you tomorrow you have an interview with a regional CEO for, for this role. I was super unprepared because I was, you know, on my holiday or my study holiday before. Uh, you know, me being a preparation nerd, I felt super uncomfortable and and you know basically you know approached it with a little bit of a preparation I had at, at the time. I mean, of course, motivation and everything was there. And uh, I have to know uh, to say I, I knew uh, our regional CEO uh, well before, but you know he was you know he had a poker face. He was very official. I mean, the whole process was. Uh, very strict and then you know uh, just by me bringing up some thoughts and some ideas that I just picked up at the study trip like uh, you know notion of rehiring yourself so in Silicon Valley what you know they're saying you know as a, as a leader you need to ask yourself honestly each year do you still have the skills that are needed to to do your job in the best way and you know me mentioning this kind of topics i mean it just it broke him he started laughing smiling he took a book from his uh, from his bag and said you know what you remind me of this lady she's a, a you know motivational speaker in denmark thought leader and and you know basically i was recommended the, by him the, the same day and of course i mean my my track record and me being long in a company doing a great job it, of course it's a base but i think you know mm -hmm. it will little step that made it easier and I, it was definitely due to the inspiration and ideas that I had and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so you it's it's super, super, it really yeah. helps a lot on your career wonderful great and um, as far as other um, things that we've maybe mentioned already but I'd just like to repeat we have um, in this MBA program of all our students real life content and life cases um, a global network that we connect students with. We have the ability to align your job with your family and the MBA, and the fact that you can improve a lot of personal skills and interpersonal skills, as well as the leadership skills. And then finally, you would graduate with a very highly recognized degree um, from the Vienna University of Economics and Business. And in terms of return on investment, we do have a few figures that we like to share. Um, these come from our alumni survey and as well from the Financial Times ranking who surveys our graduates of the Global Executive MBA. Um, 
because this is very interesting for a lot of people doing an MBA, what will it pay out? A lot of people, 76%, um, namely, do get career changes um, within one year, actually, of graduation or while they're in the program. So it's a quite a quick change to the career. If you're looking for that, um, of course, not everybody's looking for that. But 47% uh, of people do see personal development um, involved and advancing to new positions is one of these aspects, but also leadership duties increased. There are higher earnings in terms of these changes that people undergo while doing an MBA or afterwards. And we've seen on average 30% of among our alumni, um, our alumni get, excuse me, um, around 30% increase in their salary. But um, the Global Executive MBA alumni have a 33% salary increase on average. And mainly what we also see is this sense of pride and self-fulfillment that you can gain as well as I met an alumnus who, for instance, um, has taken on a responsibility as a volunteer board member for the International Paralympic Committee. And this was one of her dreams. And now managing um, and being among the board and managing these strategic uh, paths of the committee is, is really something that inspires her to wake up um, every day and do this in her free time. So Anna, may I have a comment on that? Can we go back to the slide? Uh, yes. Because this is a question I often get, you know, when I talk to prospective students, to my friends, I mean, you know, it's always, did it pay off? You know, the return of investment is a question that is always connected with the MBA, you know, because there is a huge sure. investment. Mm -hmm. Buy money where, you know, it's a business school, it's a natural question. I'm allergic to this question because I always say, you know, there are things you cannot put a price tag on. I mean, how do I put a price tag on get six uh, amazing new friends? Uh, or, you know, how do I get a price tag on, like you say, uh, you know, fulfilling my dream professionally or in a private sense. But, you know, reflecting on these figures, I have to say, looking at my class and my classmates and my personal situation, the figures uh, quite well represent what happened to us. Uh, so, yes, uh, when it comes to the salary increase, uh, yeah, I have to say almost 100% of us have a salary increase and some of them have even doubled their income. And when it comes to the career change, yeah, we're definitely two thirds have uh, moved up in the within the company, have joined the new company within a role which they wanted to have. Also, uh, you know, we had a friend uh, friend moving to, uh, from Russia, a starting career here in real estate. That was exactly what she wanted to do at the beginning of the MBA. We had a friend who founded his own company, uh, which was voted one of the most successful Austrian startups uh, uh, three years ago. Uh, so basically, you know, amazing uh, career stories. Uh, but I have to say, uh, you know, the one thing that is the most valuable is actually uh, self-fulfillment and this, the feeling of confidence. Because this confidence uh, that you get by, you know, getting all this world-class knowledge and insights and getting, you know, uh, a network or, you know, people that are like-minded, uh, that are there to challenge you and support you uh, is priceless. It, is, it gives you such a great confidence and and uh, you you be basically become uh, you know resilient to any kind of uh, shortcomings. And you know if we talk about uh, basically four year, four years from starting the program during these four years, not everybody of us was in an ideal professional situation. You know we had a friend who during our program. I mean this is a funny, but now from this perspective story. But you know he's a professional project manager. He lost his job two times. Why? Because the pharmaceutical company he worked for uh, shut the unit, then he joined a big company, their spin-off, they also shut the unit he was working on. Bad luck. Another friend, she joined from, uh, she moved from personal reasons to another market, even though her seniority and everything, she couldn't find an, a new job. So, you know, quite few were in not an ideal situation. Looking, looking at it now, you know, he's super happy as a project manager in financial institution. He wanted to move to finance field. She's head of the department in a huge bank. So basically, they're both happy. But, you know, the guy that the friend Victor, who was the founder of the startup, the most successful startup, just got bankrupt half a year ago. But already is uh, uh, already is uh, joining as a marketing lead, uh, another startup. So basically what I really want message from my side, I mean, you know, the times we're living in, uh, you know, um, they're, you know, they don't give you security in terms of any industry, in terms of any company, in terms of any market. 
which also makes our life a bit more interesting. And I think having this experience will give you a lot of confidence and security that whatever happens, you're going to be fine. And this is one of the best uh, outcomes of this experience. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you. Well, I'd like to open the floor now to questions. Um, have we had and also share um, a quick side note that we do have scholarships available right now. Um, and I'd leave, leave the, the floor open now to questions if we have any, Mila. Yes, we do. We do. Thank you, Anna and Katarina, for this presentation and discussion. It was really informative. And we're going to move to our first question. And uh, it goes to uh, Katarina. Um, how did you prepare for the admissions? OK. So I was also nerdy there. I, uh, you know, I polished my application letter for quite a few months. Uh, then, uh, you know, I also read some cases for the interview. But from this perspective, I think if you have, uh, let's say, at least five plus years of experience, uh, and if you have a good motivation, uh, just, you know, write your thoughts. Why, write, why do you want to do it? Uh, write something about yourself, prepare the documents, and, and you know, uh, just be honest during the interview process. So from this perspective, I could have invested less time. Still, I, I didn't regret it. I think, you know, um, uh, I was also part of some of the interview processes. Uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, what, what Academy is looking for is the people who are contributing to the program. This is, you know, the selection criteria are, are strict in terms of the, you know, it's also your value that you will get. I mean, if you have somewhat less than five years of experience, you will use uh, the knowledge, uh, I mean, the use of the knowledge will be lower. So you know, that you have relevant experience and that you really have the right motivation. And, and these are the things that, that will, you know, be definitely sufficient. Just really be yourself, write an uh, honest and, and uh, a really straightforward motivation letter, prepare all the documents, and then, you know, uh, sure, uh, the, the you know program management from the executive academy and some of the alumni will be happy to talk to you about that. So don't stress out around the you know motivation letters, etc. I did, but you know it's it's really uh, it's you know very obvious. Okay, thank you, Anna. Do you have any tips on um, on how people should address the the admissions process? Well, I think that. If you have also considered starting the admission process, just know that you don't have to have everything ready right away at the minute you start the online application form. Um, this is just a tip to, let's say, ease the, the workload on you um, because we do know that people are balancing just a lot when they're working, they're also applying. So we don't try to make it harder for you. You can just start with the online application form it takes 20 minutes. Um, you're typing in forms about your background, your, your address, your university level, and, and a little bit of uh, your goals. Yes, the motivation part is included there, um, but you can always save the online application form and return to it another day. So these are, um, this is kind of like an, a nice way to make it easier for you. And then once you've completed the form, there's basically the second stage is emailing documents to the program manager of the program you're interested in and if you forgot anything or if you're not able to turn it all at one time that's okay too our program managers are really uh, yeah they're humans too and they know that um they just it's not possible to have all the documents maybe at once and it's okay to hand things in step by step so that's what I'd just like to add there, because I think Katarina really mentioned a lot um, based on the interview, who we are looking for, and that sums up the processes. In, in terms of, OK, timeline, you would also basically expect this to last around one month, but um, we break it down like, OK, you can turn in the application form, then we arrange an interview, which takes maybe seven to 10 days based on your availability, but the availability of the academic director, the program manager and sometimes we do invite alumna like Katarina mentioned she's been in a few interviews so once we've coordinated the, the appointment um, after your appointment takes place you can expect to get a feedback um, an admissions decision within five to ten working days so all in all this is four weeks to reckon with 
Thanks. Thank you. Um, we're going to move to uh, um, the next question. Um, uh, it's for, for Katarina um, again. Um, did you apply for a loan to pay for your MBA and did you get a scholarship? Yes, so I did, of course. I think everybody should try to apply. I mean, if you meet the criteria at the time I applied, it was if you uh, so it was a female leadership need based and it was related to some countries. So uh, there are some specific countries where are eligible for scholarships and there are some um, scholarships by the partners. I remember Yedimosti is a Russian, uh, uh, I think, business uh, uh, magazine that offers 50 percent scholarship. And we had at, le at least until I think two years ago, there was this profile scholarship. It's a marketing uh, publication from Austria that offered 50% to anybody. So it was not exclusively related to Austrian citizens. It was uh, apl uh, applicable to everybody. So look for the scholarship options, of course. Uh, and you know, with the application, you should state it. I did get a little percentage. I mean, it's not huge. And I wouldn't mind even if I didn't, I would still do it. But I think you know the academy is evaluating based on your uh, you know uh, on your uh, contribution to the class and also on your need. Uh, so of course, the more senior you are, uh, the less likely is that you will get a significant scholarship. But academy will also uh, you know take this into uh, consideration. So try everything. I mean, if you're in Austria, you also will get a great uh, opportunity to get the tax refund. So I basically got almost 50% of my tuition back. Talk to your employer also, you know, it's a good way for them to keep the good talent. So, you know, also it's it's taxable differently than any other benefits that they would provide to you. So there are many, many options. I mean, also, I remember the tuition is split between basically it was split between three years for me. You know, between the installments, there are periods so you can really, uh, you know, you can benefit from that. But of course, it's an investment and you need to plan for it. So I don't think that nobody's just, you know paying it from from you know the pocket money so we all need to plan it and and you know con consider it seriously yes yes and i'd like to add to that um because you did mention a few of the criteria that um are just a little bit outdated now that we are moving into the new cohorts we've revised our scholarships to really focus now on people with financial need so the Scholarships that we provide, 100% of the EU Executive Academy provides, are not restricted to certain countries. Um, ah. However, we just know that um, if you are in Austria, this tax benefits exist. So if you're living and working and paying taxes in Austria, it's very unlikely that we would provide you a scholarship just because we want to use our budget of scholarships to help people in areas of Europe or other areas of the world which um, have lower average incomes. So we know that also they're going to be traveling to Vienna and have this extra added cost than somebody living in Vienna. So that might clear things up for you in terms of your expectations. And the maximum amount of scholarships that you can get are no longer 50%, but 35%. These are just um, different numbers. But just know that you can also get a scholarship amount that's a little bit lower um, just because it's one budget that uh, we have. So we provide scholarships from anywhere from 5% up to 25% or even 35%. But um, it's a range. And one tip here for our listeners, because you're here today, so I'll share one extra tip, is apply early. That means that uh, less people have applied for the scholarship, so we have a better overview on um, things. We, it might help your chances. Um, again, I'm not in the scholarship committee, but I, I work with them and I talk with them a lot. They want you to argue your financial position very strongly. Um, that's the main factor we're looking for, and it should be, of course, standard that your track record is excellent. Um, you should show that you're really going to be adding to the classroom really um, these things that make you anyways uh, a good candidate for getting into the program are again helpful for the scholarship application as well. Um, we look at a lot of the basically who people will have extra costs due to the MBA um, and we want to help them out the most through a scholarship. All right, so next question I would say would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're moving on to, to the next question. Um, uh, Anna, I think it's uh, it's for you. Does the school help with visas for candidates outside of EU? 
Yes, uh, we do. We have an, also a good record of having many people from outside the EU come into our modules based in Vienna. So what we do is we provide a, a statement that helps you go to your go to the embassy of Austria in your country and apply for a visa to enter Austria. And at the same time, when we take our students to the United States for their international residencies, um, it's the same thing. We provide a, a statement letter and we've had no problems in the past getting our students into the classroom because we are a reputable institution and it's been working. But we do have this, uh, of course, the service for our international students, yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we're again, we're heading to a wrap up, but I have, um, I think uh, we have the, the perfect questions for a wrap up. So maybe um, Anna and Katerina, we can give your uh, your answers each. What three, uh, what are the three most important traits that make you differ from other business schools? That's from Dimitri. Okay, well, um, I'd like to kick it off here by saying we have the international factor, um, but we also have the work experience and the diversity in the classroom in one MBA program of 16 months or 18 months. So it's really, it's that factor that's pretty cool for people doing this program and making it a worthwhile experience. That um, it can be also cemented by our fact that we are triple accredited. Um, if you look into the schools worldwide that have the triple accreditation, which is AAPSP, AMBA, and Equius, it, we end up being a small group of only 100 business schools worldwide. So um, this is about 1% of all MBA schools being, um, being available. So it's really like a small percentage. You can be sure that we are continuing evaluating our quality standards because these accreditations run out after a certain amount of time. And also the work experience is really unique. This is different than a consecutive master's degree or um, other MBA programs with younger students here. We really have a, we work with a group of senior executives um, around 37 or 35 year olds. Um, and also, it's just a very diverse group. We have 70% of international students. So that means only 30% are Austrian and 70% are coming from 20 or even 30 countries. If you're in the professional MBA, you have this potential to connect to people from 30 countries in a module. So that wraps it up from my side on the, the three top factors. Katrina, I'll hand it over to you. Yes, so for me, it's like community, the diversity you have mentioned, and also, as mentioned before, the, the attitude, which is really built on, on really human connection and generosity. The second thing is, I think, honestly, guys, I know now thinking at looking at the tuition, you're, you know, it's a lot of money. But if we compare value that you get and uh, uh, also faculty that you get for this money, I think it's, um, you know, we, you can't get it anywhere uh, in Europe and of course not in US. So you will have professors from ISEAD, from IA, from uh, you will go to Stanford or to MIT or to Harvard based on your uh, specialization. And, you know, it's it, you would usually have to pay around two to three times more uh, for, for this level of uh, academic and, and, you know, also uh, the experience. So this is a really great combination of value and, and the quality. And the third last, but not the least, me as alumni, I mean, I think, you know, this is, I don't know how is it with other business schools, but this is everlasting relationship. I mean, I just keep getting things, you know, back from the academy and, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, content, or you know the the connections or just uh, another so Anna to your your point never nobody does two MBAs I would do the second one now again <laughs> it's uh, just an amazing experience and and honestly once you're done the first half year you're like okay great I can you know have my weekends and and you know more time but then you're gonna miss it and you know but by staying connected and getting still this inspiration content and and staying close to the academy it matters a lot and staying close in my case it's also literally so my office is 10 minutes walk from the executive academy accidentally and this is a really great combination so i'm very often there and and you know this is i think a very special relationship that it's not ending once you you finish the program i mean it's up to you you can of course you don't you're not obliged but you can take advantage of this definitely 
Definitely. Thank you for those great words. I think you really underline the team spirit we have here, and uh, we try to give this back to to everyone in our network. So um, here are my contact details. I've scrolled through the screen a few times, but please get in touch if you enjoyed this webinar and you want to hear more from alumna or from Katarina, send me an email. Thank you, Anna and Katarina, for this wonderful presentation. Um, to those of who uh, attended and had questions that were, le were left unanswered, I will make sure they are forwarded to Katarina and Anna, and you will get your answer back in writing uh, from our part. You will also receive a link with the recording of the whole webinar so we can rewatch it. Um, on behalf of uh, Unimai team, we wish you luck on your academic journey. Thank you for attending this webinar, and thank you again, Anna Katarina, for this wonderful presentation. So um, have a great evening and bye. Thank you again. Thank you very much for your time, guys, and good luck with the applications. <laughs> Thank you as well to Unimai for helping us organize this. It's been a great partnership. So take care and Thank stay you. safe, everyone. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone.